Hello, ACCA Performance Management students. In this video, we're going to look at two topics new to the September 2021 syllabus. That's time series and regression analysis. Friends, I'm going to take you through the story of time series and regression analysis with an old exam question. This one's over 10 years old as these topics used to be in PM. They then got pushed down to the MA exam and now they're, they're, they're back in the syllabus. So you need to be ready for these topics in section C. And I will take you through this past exam question showing you how these concepts work. So I'd like you to download this question. You can find the link below. I'd like you to pause the video and then give this question a try on your own or at least find all of the important information. And then when you're done, start the video up again and we'll go through it together. Friends, I'm in the practice platform. I'm in a blank workspace, a blank spreadsheet, a fabulous tool. You can use this to do any question you want from any source. So I've got the PDF open in the other window. Let's crack this question together. We're looking for the total waste for the year. So let's set up a table and we're gonna need the quarter because the sum of those quarters will be the total for the year. So my first column will be the quarter. And then we're gonna need the Q value to plug into that trend equation. Okay. Then we can get the seasonal variation and next to that we can then do our waste forecast so i'm going to use these columns to get organized here and how many quarters do we have we're talking about 2010 right this is an older question so imagine 12 13 years ago right this was the future so let's just pretend uh, we got 2010 quarter one quarter two etc now this is a bit a bit strange the q value they say is just the quarter number growing by one from 2009 so when we get into 2010 we had one two three four four has elapsed so now we're at five then we go to six then we go to seven and lastly eight guys that's the q value right that's the the numerical value of that quarter extended into 2010. now we can pluck right from the question the seasonal variation we got negative 200 in quarter one 250 in quarter two, 150 in quarter three, and negative 100 in quarter four. So look at that. In the, 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 the autumn and the spring and the winter, they're producing less waste in this place. Hmm. Summertime, they're making more waste. Anyway, not important for us now. Guys, the waste forecast. Let's look at that formula, guys. The waste forecast we need to go back to the question and look at that equation for the trend 2000 plus 25 multiplied by the Q which is in column C okay let's put our multiplication in brackets there to preserve the order of operation and lastly we need to now add that seasonal va variation which is in d okay and there it is wonderful easy peasy in the spreadsheet i drag this down and i can do an underline to show the next the next figure is the the total use the sum function the handy dandy sum function grab all of the cells above close that out there we go that is the total for the year. Let's tell the marketing team that we're doing part A of the question. Done deal, easy, marks achieved.
Let's go now to part B. In part B, we're going to go back in time to the management accounting exam and we're going to relive our experience with the regression analysis formulas. So let's make a note to the marker. We're doing part B here. And you know, whenever we're doing regression analysis, we need a table of an X value and a Y value. They've given that to us, the dependent and the independent variable. We choose a, a volume of waste to process and we get a total cost. Okay, so the X is the tons, the Y is the total cost, right? So we're going to set this up. We've got our X value, we've got our Y value, and then those formulas require the sum of X, uh, the, 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 the product of X and Y, X times Y. And then we need the x value squared. And in spreadsheets, we use that caret symbol. There we go. Okay. And we're just going to copy those figures out of the question very carefully. Okay, just type them in carefully. So I've got my x values in. Let me do my y values now. And I'm going to add those zeros. I'm going to put it into thousands. I'm working in a spreadsheet. Let the spreadsheet do the work. Okay, there we go. We have the Y's in place. These numbers are going to get big. Let's do a little formatting of this area of our spreadsheet so we can stay organized, so we can follow along, so the marker, markers can follow, and to ensure we don't make any errors dropping or adding zeros. Okay, now spreadsheet's going to do the work for us. I'm just going to get the product of X and Y. There we go. I'm going to drag that down, copying that that formula to the cells below. The X squared column will simply be the figure in column B to the power of two using that caret symbol to show raising to the power. Again, bring this down here. Great, making quick work of this. Let's now grab this range of cells. We can put an underline there and we're looking for the sums, right? That's so equal to the sum function. Grab the four cells above it. There we go. 93, 9,300. And grab that cell, copy it over. Guys, there we go. We have the sum figures. We are ready to rock the rest of this question. Last thing we need, guys, is the n value. And this is a super easy example. We, we've got four rows uh, in our spreadsheet. If we had more, we could use the count function, but no need to do that. n is equal to four. Okay. Guys, now let's look at the, the, those, those formulas again. They'll give you these in the exam. So at this point, you might need to open the formula sheet from that help tab in the lower left, okay? And you're gonna do this slowly. You're gonna be careful here. Normally, I do not recommend you make mega formulas. Mega formulas can get you into trouble, but in this case, there's not really any way around it. The first thing we'll do is get the B, and the B is the variable cost, okay? So B, we'll tell the marker we're doing that, and that's gonna be equal to that big formula. And we're going to be careful. We're going to use parentheses to preserve order of operations. First thing we do is the n. That's 4. And we multiply that by the sum of x, y. Carefully grabbing that, wrapping that business in parentheses. From which we subtract the product of the sum of x and the sum of y. So we can just grab that there. Multiply by y14. Close out those parentheses, and let's now wrap that all of that in parentheses because that will be the numerator. Let's put a divide by sign here, open up another couple of brackets, that will be the denominator, and the denominator will be 4 multiplied by the sum of x squared, that's the bit in column B, okay, and let's use another set of parentheses there. Uh, minus the sum of x 
squared, okay? That is different from that column uh, e. That's the, that's the bit in b14 to the power of 2. And let's see what we get. 160, that's the figure that I'm looking for. Very nice. So that's the variable cost. Now, let's get the A, right, the fixed cost. Now that we have B, we can do that quite quickly. A is going to be equal to that average Y value. So that's going to be the sum of Y divided by 4, okay, minus the average of those variable costs. So I just open up another bracket and that will be the B multiplied by the X, sum of X divided by four. Friends, there we go. Spreadsheet helping us out, making quick work of this. But remember now, if we read the requirement, they want us um, to adjust for inflation, which is 5%. So now I can go like this, variable cost. Inflation, fixed cost with inflation. All we have to do is grab the figure in C16 and multiply by 1.05. Copy that down and the spreadsheet will do the work. There we have it, friends. That is the solution to part B. Friends, there you have it. Seasonal variation and regression analysis made easy in the practice platform. Guys, good luck on your upcoming exams. Steve signing out for now.